Right. So um, I honestly think that the challenges that we have to deal with in Bridgeville is that we want to have a safe, pedestrian-friendly community that has a better quality of life. Now, the main arteries, understanding that the main arteries in Bridgeville, Washington Avenue, Bank Street, and McLaughlin Road are state streets. I would really like to find out when the last traffic studies were done for those particular streets and what was the outcome, all right? Now, I did speak to PennDOT on Thursday or Friday and asked them why, uh, their latest traffic report on Bank Street uh, was a negative result, and they said they just didn't find a need for a stop sign at the corner of Dewey and Bank. Now, I asked them specifically if they could provide numbers, volumes, mixes, and so forth, and they said that I'd have to email them. Chances are I'm pro we're probably going to have to do a Freedom of Information Act. But anyway, I'd like to request at least five to 10 years worth of traffic data from PennDOT so that we know exactly how traffic has built up over in the past 15 some years. I also think that it's important that we investigate traffic calming, calming opportunities. And I'm not talking speed bumps. I'm talking other mechanisms to slow traffic down on our major arteries. Um, the other thing is, is that would it be beneficial for us as a community to put radar speed signs up? And I'm not even certain when the last time something like that was done in Bridgeville. Um, I'm not talking speed trap cameras either as much as I'd like to have them, but I don't think Pennsylvania does that. Um, so radar speed signs indicating the traffic traveling on these roads, what their speeds are and what the limits are. Um, the other thing that also helps is an organization or a certification called Walkable Communities. Walkable communities is a certification that a town or a city goes through to try to emphasize safe walking parameters. And that does include traffic and slowing traffic down. Uh, the closest one here is Mount Lebanon. They've been certified for several years now as a walkable community. That in itself slows traffic down, but also gives a sense of pride, I think, to a town that they're able to achieve this. Um, obviously, if we had a larger police presence on our roads that might slow down um, traffic, and um, I don't think it would eliminate the truck traffic, but at least it would slow them down. Um, and then I actually think that just talking to the neighbors here on Bank Street, it would be beneficial to hold a small forum of neighbors to discuss what their complaints or recommendations are. Um, I know talking to people further up the street from me, they've been complaining about traffic for 30 years on Bank Street. So uh, is it time to do a thorough traffic study investigation, which would cost, I don't know, upwards, probably now fifty to $70,000? Um, that would still be up for discussion. Um, but I think it could offer insight into where we should go, uh, short term as well as long term, all right? Um, so the other, the funding situation, probably PennDOT, Allegheny County, our state reps, for um, uh, walkable communities, strong towns, and America Walks all have seed funding or additional grant money available. Solution partners would be um, engineering to help um, develop a plan. 
and to look at their experience with other small communities to see what was possibly done in those communities to make the traffic situation a little bit calmer. And then actually to discuss with Mount Lebanon Township um, how it was that they achieved um, the walkable community certification. Anticipated value to the community, you know, I put medium down, but I honestly can't, I don't think that we can put a value on pride. If people are proud to live in Bridgeville because we have this nice Mayberry type of community, you know, I don't think you can put a value on that. But you could put a value on our house prices as they would go up because it is a Mayberry type of community. Budget implications, probably uh, volunteer to 70, 80,000 if you wanted to do a traffic, complete traffic study. So um, now I will just say one last thing for this. In regards to the traffic study, I think that it might be beneficial to at least look at some of the implications of doing small pieces of um, uh, just small pieces of Shady Avenue, things that could happen on Shady Avenue, and what could happen on the north side of Washington Avenue. And that's it for the traffic studies. Any comments, corrections, recommendations, questions? So yeah. for the for the um, planning commission to, to have a conversation. Right. I guess my only question, Justine, and well for everybody really is and it's it's an honest question, like do we all agree that we have a traffic problem other than I'm not underselling it, but people always want people to go slower past their street when you got kids or whatever. Right. I just don't know how to answer that. Do we agree that there's a problem to be solved here or is this a nice to have? And again, it's an honest question. I guess that's the same question I have, Tim. I mean, I'm reading a lot of you know speeding here and I find myself wondering what particular streets are we talking about that have a speeding issue? Or is it just widespread and I don't have the sense that it is. Yeah. I mean, frankly, here on Greg Avenue, I can tell you that on speed, I love my bumpy brick road. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing of it is, and perhaps we may want to just do a query of the neighborhoods on, on Bank Street, on Chartier Street, on McLaughlin Road. Yeah. I, I, I like the idea of the forum. If people feel strongly about it, right. I'd love to hear that. And I shoot, my sister lives next to you. I know she wants people to slow down on Bank Street. I get that. Right. But will that ever be sufficient? Or is it going to be like you recognize the two people a day that are speeding here as well as in Mount Lebanon? I don't know. But the thing of it is, is that how do we know? I mean, you're, you, you can either take my word or Nikki's word or somebody else's word that lives on here. But if we have no proof, how do we know that people aren't speeding, right? I, I, think, I think it goes more further than just speed. Uh, you know, just trying to cross some of these streets, um, <laughs> the kind of traffic at times makes it a, a challenge. Um, and this kind of goes into the pedestrian thing that I, that I did later on. Right. So, but, um, you know, trying to cross Bank Street at, at Dewey or trying to get across Bower Hill Road, um, or even Station Street sometimes, can be a real challenge. Right. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's volume, of, it's, it's not just speed, but it's volume of traffic. It's, you know, a lot of, a lot of things that, that kind of boil into that. Um, you know, it's trying to get across Bower Hill during normal non-pandemic um, times, um, you know, can be can be a real challenge. Can be a real. You can take your life in your hands. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I think there's I think there's some intersections that could possibly be looked at. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else? Larry, you got anything to add? No. No, I don't. Joe? Uh, no, but I, I think Justine did a great job starting off the conversation tonight. Uh, I'm impressed. Agree. I mean, you know, the other thing, too, is to recognize that no work is going to be done on repaving Bank Street for any time in the foreseeable future. So, I mean, it sounds like a um, uh, shotgun going off every time that a cement truck goes up the street. So, anyway. All right. I hear, it, I hear that all the time from Frank Exler. He's been all over Ken thought about that. You got it. Yep. I see Frank. I'm on deaf ears, apparently. 